Knicks family, what's popping? It's your boy, Simeon Russell. Knicks got blitzed. But hey, Luke had a good game. What's poppin', folks? Frank, yep, played well. What's going on? MH, Chris, the Prince, what's poppin', man? BN, what's up? Hey, it's not a bad Sunday. It was decent outside, at least where I am at. Where I'm at. A little bit chilly. I spent all day outside at a fundraiser. Watched the game at the fundraiser. You know what I'm saying? Just so, uh, you know, just so I can make sure I'm on. But uh, Knicks got blitzed. I had a little bit of hope after the first half. But uh, they just got blitzed, man. But it's okay. It's okay. I was surprised. I didn't read any reports beforehand. I was surprised to see Luke start. You know what I'm saying? Um with Courtney Lee back, I was surprised that Frank still started, but I'm glad he did. Happy with that. You know, uh, Frank played a little bit aggressive today. You know, he took 10 shots tonight, today, which is good. You know what I'm saying? Frank usually Frank usually bottoms out or, or, or his high is usually around seven shots. You know what I'm saying? He took seven, uh, 10 shots today. He was a little bit more aggressive. I was cool with that. Frank's getting an opportunity, and he's getting more comfortable with that opportunity as well. You can see it the way he's playing. He's getting more comfortable with the opportunity. Uh, you know, he's got a, you know, one of these days, pretty soon, maybe over the summer, he gets that shooting percentage up. You know what I'm saying? He gets that shooting percentage up. Um... Shot forty percent, but that'll come. That'll happen. That that'll definitely happen. All in all, you know, I didn't expect to win. I didn't expect to get blitzed by twenty six. Actually, by thirty. Thirty was the biggest lead. I didn't expect to get blitzed that bad. Didn't expect to win. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cornet was a surprise. You say I was surprised that he started. I wasn't aware. Like I said, I had been. Uh, I'd been at a fundraiser all day, so I wasn't aware that Cantor wasn't playing because I didn't check up. But uh, when I when I pulled the game up and I seen he was starting, I was excited. I, I'm glad he got the start, and I'm glad he performed the way that he did. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, we can't go crazy. He's not going to be... Well, you know what? You never know, but I doubt he's going to be an all-star type player, but I think he can be, he could definitely be a role player. You know, uh, I said it before after the first time he played Toronto, and maybe it's just Toronto. We're, we're going to get to Cornet. We're going to get to Cornet, so let me not jump the gun. Let's not jump the gun on it. Uh, let me run down this game right quick, and then we'll get to Cornet. All right, I'm going to run it down. But, um, Take a look at this game, man. I mean, I don't know. We gave up, you know, we, we gave up 32 points in the first quarter, 32-27. We didn't play bad. That starting unit didn't look bad. But, of course, we, you know, when you start games, teams are kind of filling each other out, right? So, you always got to wait and see what happens from there. Second quarter, 33-30. Still not bad. We were down five. I, I was a little bit upset in that se at the end of the second quarter. For whatever reason, Frank was on Cal Lowry. He was there with him. And Tim Hardaway leaves his man to, to, to double-team Cal Lowry. Why? And, and you leave your man wide open. That was a dumb play, dumb move. And it made the Knicks be down by eight at halftime instead of five. Not that it would have made that much of a difference, but it's just a dumb move. It was just stupid. It was just stupid, you know. Uh, Troy, you having a problem? I mean, the starting lineup didn't play bad. Troy, you know what I'm saying? They didn't play bad. You know, before subs came in, I think the Knicks were, it, it was at least like 22-22 before substitutes started coming into the game, something like that. 
you know, so the Knicks were playing pretty even from the start of the game. Now, I'm not saying that our starting five can match up with Toronto's starting five. You know, the beginning of the game is usually a filling out process. You know, but starting five wasn't horrible, in my opinion. You know, if you want to put any credence on the beginning of the game, you know, if you want to put credence on the beginning of the game, you know, um, so, you know, that's, you know, that's what it is. But anyway, then you see, of course, second half, Knicks get blitzed in the second half, outscored by, what's that, 18 points in the second half. Um, and, you know, we just had, I mean, the Raptors averaged 112 points a game. We gave up 132 points. That's ridiculous. We're going to talk about what happened to our defense. But that's ridiculous. 132 points. That's crazy. Raptors' biggest lead was 30. Our biggest lead was 5. We got smacked on the boards, which is probably to be expected with um, what cancer out. Right? We gave up. Raptors had 32 assists. We had 21. We had seven steals, four blocks. We took care of the ball. We've been taking care of the ball lately. I have to admit, we've been taking care of the ball. You know, if you want to find a bright spot in anything, is that we've been taking better care of the ball. We shot 45.5% from the field, 33.3% from three, and 79.2% from the free throw line. Raptors shot 50.5% from the, from, uh, the field. 45.7% from three, which every team shoots a high percentage against us. And then they shot 88% from the free throw line. Outman outplayed by a better team. That's what you would expect, I guess. It's what you would expect. But I don't, you would expect to get outmanned and outplayed by a better team, but not smacked by. Not smacked by, by like that. You know what I mean? But, hey, it is what it is. What are we going to do? All right, so let's talk about Cornet a little bit because, you know, I know, you know, there's some people that said we jumped the gun earlier in the season when he when, when he scored 11 points and ha- had a double-double against the Raptors. And, you know, I'm not sure if I jumped the gun. I I, I still think that he can be a good player. You know what I'm saying? I think he can be a valuable asset to this team, you know, in, in, as a three-point shooter, as someone who can spread the floor, take the big man out of the lane as needed on every team in the NBA nowadays. You know, you take the big man out, out uh, outside that lane, you can open up, the, open up lanes for penetration, you know. Cornet is... Uh, he went off the dribble a couple times today. That surprised me. I didn't know he could go off the dribble that way. That surprised me. And I'm glad to see it. You know, because if you have someone that shoots threes, undoubtedly people are going to begin to close out those threes. You know what I mean? They're going to close those threes out, and you got to be able to go off the dribble. So he wasn't afraid to go off the dribble, and he's not afraid to shoot the ball. You know what I mean? Not afraid to shoot it. So that's... That's good. That's encouraging. That's definitely encouraging from a young guy. You know, um, big shout out to the French Unicorn for the super chat. He, he gives a shout out to Marty Nix, who's Mark, Tony Crow, Ishmael, BN. Said, man loves fellas. Cornet looks like a keeper. He has NBA tools. I agree with you, French Unicorn. I think he has NBA tools. I think he'll be a nice role player sometime in the future. If not next year, you know, another big that can spread the floor. You know, we've seen him shot block shots. You know, so we know he he can he can get a few blocks. Um, you know, he he's not awful defensively. Not awful defensively. He can. Um, you know, he's tall enough. Obviously, in the first game, he got a few rebounds for us. He had four rebounds tonight, today. You know, Luke Corner ended the game 18 points, 7 for 15 from the field, 
52.7% field goal percentage. 42.9% from threes, three for seven from the three-point line. Had four rebounds, two assists, and one block. Had one turnover. It's not a bad stat line. Played 33 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So, who knows? He could be one of them guys that, you know, gives you a good, strong 15 minutes a game, spread the floor, you know, open up the lanes for other people. You know? So, I'm encouraged by that, for sure. Now, I mean, son, you say nice 12th man off the bench in garbage time. I disagree. I, I do. I disagree. You know, I think that, um, I mean, he started the game. The Knicks started off well. You know, and he was a big piece to that. I think he had like seven of the Knicks' first 11 points. You know, no one's saying that he's going to be a guy that creates shots or does anything like that. You know, he's a setup guy, but that's cool. That's okay. You need that. You know, I think he can be a contributor. He, I think he can definitely be a contributor. You know what I mean? And um, hopefully tonight was enough for Jeff to, to continue to give him some more work. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, it's enough for him to, he did enough for him to earn some more minutes so we can see, continue to see what he looks like. See if he can be consistent with it. You know, see if he can be consistent. Because, you know, after the Raptors game the first time, and maybe it's just against the Raptors. Maybe he just plays well against the Raptors. We don't know. Because he didn't, you know, in other games, he didn't get enough time to really get acclimated. Jeff was still still trying to win. Now maybe he earned a few more minutes so he can get in there and we can see if he can be consistent. If he can do this against another team. How about that? Let's see, if, let's see, see him do it against another team. You know, I, I, but I think he has the tools to be able to do it. You know, that three-point shot is nice. Um, you know, he's tall enough to rebound. Defensively, you know, he probably needs some work. But um, I'm encouraged by what we saw today. And let's see if he does it again. See if he can do it again. You know, but, uh, you know. Looking at the starting lineup, man, you know, Emmanuel Moutier, Frank Nilakina, Luke Cornett, Beasley, Tim Hardaway. Everybody's 25 and under except for Beasley. I'm not sure what the purpose was, honestly, for starting Beasley. I mean, if you're going to, if you, at this point, really, and maybe they just don't want to get a, a, a letter from the NBA. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But at this point, really, let Troy Williams start over. Oh, I'm sorry. Let Kyle Quinn or someone start over over, over Beasley or, or something. You know, let, let's just go with a, all a young starting five. I mean, we're getting blitzed anyway. Anyway, we're getting blitzed. You know what I mean? We're getting blitzed every game anyway. Might as well just go with an all young squad and let them let them play. Because Beasley, I mean. He didn't play horrible, though, right? He had 10 points. He had 11 rebounds. He did have two turnovers, one assist. That's not terrible. But I just don't know what the point is now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the point is. That's my whole That's my whole thing. Beasley can ball. We know it. And he's an off and on guy. He's going to be a bench player. For the, for the remainder of Beasley's career, he's going to be a guy that comes off the bench on a good team in my opinion. So, you know, what, what, what's the point? You know, what you, we know what we have in Beasley pretty much. Let's see what these other guys do. You know, let's see, let's see what these guys can do. Let KO run the point. <laughs> hey, you know what though? Maybe not bringing the ball up, running the point, you know, maybe not, not that role of a point guard, but Sometimes you you can run the offense through KO sometimes, though, because he can pass, and he has a good understanding of who's going to cut, when, where, and why. I Kind of like Noah used to do with the Bulls back in the day, except he can shoot that mid-range shot, and Noah wasn't able to shoot that, hit that mid-range shot. You know what I'm saying? But KO can hit it. 
you know, there are times when I believe you can definitely run the offense through KO. And there's going to be a team out there who likes to run pitch post action that really wants KO because he can pass. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, that's where if the Knicks do want to keep Kylo Quinn, um, they're going to have trouble because teams that like to run, that like to, to, to get the ball to the big man in the high post and play off of the big man in the high post off of some, uh, uh, I can't even think of the word right now. I can't even think of it, but they can run a lot through Kylo Quinn. You know, from a lot of pinch post action, they can run a lot through him. And there's going to be some teams out there that find him very valuable, I think. Teams that run some action like that. Golden State runs some action off of the high post sometimes. You know what I'm saying? With, you know, David West in the game. Sometimes even uh, KD gets the ball in that pinch post. And, and, and they run some action off of him. Teams are going to find Kyle, Kyle O'Quinn valuable because he can do that. He can hit the, the mid-range. He can rebound. He can play some defense. You know, he... he he has some times where he's a little boneheaded, but I think he understands how to run, how to, you know, manage that pit, pinch post action. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we'll see what ha you know, we'll see what happens with Kyle Quinn, but there's gonna be some suitors for him, I believe, for sure. Yeah. BN, you said uh, O'Quinn is too small and very mistake prone. But no one's talking about him being a starter or, 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 or you know, he doesn't have to be a starter to, to get a nice contract and be valuable to a team. You know what I'm saying? Kyle O'Quinn can go to a team that um, is a contender or playoff contender, even a championship contender, and be very, very valuable playing off of that you know, being a rebounder that can come off the bench, that can hit the mid-range and pass the ball from, you know, that you can run the offense through a big man. He can be valuable in that aspect. And Kyle Quinn is a playoff type of player, believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? When the game gets tight and you need a couple of tough guys out there that can really bang and, 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 and bruise it up, Kyle Quinn is the kind of guy you want because he can do that. I'm not, I'm not, none of that is to negate, you know, some of the boneheaded things he does from time, you know what I'm saying? You know, from time to time. But I think the positive things he does on the floor um, overrides some of the things he does, uh, you know, some, some of the other things that he does. Emmanuel C you said we better keep KO. You know, I I think it's gonna be hard though. I really do. I think it's gonna be hard because I don't I think the Knicks wanna try to preserve cap space for 2019. And in order to do that, you've got you, you can't sign any contracts past 2019. You know what I'm saying? So that means any contract that you give out needs to be a one-year contract. And I don't think KO is going to take a one-year contract. If he opts out, he's going to be looking to get a contract that's, you know, a five-year contract because Kylo Quinn is like 27, 28 years old. This could be his biggest contract. This one right here could be his biggest contract in the league. You know what I mean? And... um so I, I definitely do not think that he takes a one-year contract, but I think the Knicks um, are, are looking to preserve cap space for 2019. You know what I mean? And, and so I don't, I don't think that they look to that that they're going to look to sign Kyle Quinn past 2019 or any other player, unless it's a, a really big acquisition. You know, this is a really big acquisition. So, you know, Kylo Quinn is looking to get, I think he's looking, you know, for a jackpot this season. Unless if unless KO decides not to opt out, 
Then you got him for another year until 2019. But then in 2019, he's going to be looking for a payday, I believe. You know, and I see a lot of people out here, you know, you know, chuckling and laughing about Kylo Quinn or, or the kind of contract that he may demand on the open market. Uh, I think you guys might be wrong about Kylo Quinn in that aspect. You know, because, you know, if you're, you know, chuckling or, or, or making remarks about him, that means you don't think he's valuable to other teams. And I disagree. I think he's very valuable to other teams. And one of the main reasons that the Knicks would, couldn't trade him is because they know that he's going to be on the open market very soon. So they weren't going to give up much for Kylo Quinn. I think if Kylo Quinn was in the second year of his contract or maybe even the first year of his contract and he was up for trade, um, and he was and with what doing what he does now and he was up for trade, uh, I think the Knicks would have been able to get a little bit more for him. But right now, because he can opt out, you know what I'm saying? And he um, um, will potentially be a free agent. Teams aren't, won't, they wasn't going to give up nothing for him. Troy, really? What what game are you watching? You say Kylo Quinn cannot play defense? I disagree. Wholeheartedly disagree. I'm not saying he's the best uh, uh, um, defensive player in the league. But he can play defense. He's a good defensive player. You know what I'm saying? He's a good defensive player. And, you know, I mean, besides besides uh, 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 KP, he's probably the best defensive big man we have. You know, he is a decent defensive player. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what what basketball some of you guys are watching, man. Because you know, Kylo Quinn does a lot of good things for us. I just, I, I just don't get it. You know what I mean? I don't get it. Now, I seen somebody say, you know, Kylo Quinn might demand, um, you know, six to eight million, maybe ten at its high. You, you might be right. Maybe that's what he does demand. I think it's going to be more than six. Maybe it would be somewhere around eight, eight to ten. And I don't think the Knicks right now are willing to pay that. And he's going to want probably a four to five year deal. You know what I'm saying? And um, the Knicks not going to do that right now. He can defend centers. He might be a little small sometimes. I mean, do you ever watch him get blocks? I mean, Kylo Quinn is a good defender, man. I'm not sure what he averages in blocks. He had three blocks today. Right? Eight points, seven rebounds, five assists, and three blocks. Come on, man. Guy's playing well. He plays well. You know, he may not be an all-star, but he he's a good player. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Um, I think Kylo Quinn is going to have a, you know, he'll, he'll be valuable to some teams on the open market. That's what I think. You know, everybody wants the guy that's going to be a star. And if you're not that, then they don't think you're worth, worth anything. And they don't think they'll work anything. Let me open up the lines. Let me open up the lines. You know, you know, call in. Give me your opinion. You know, well, I want to know what you think about Luke Cornett. You know, will he have a role with the Knicks? Can he be a role player with the Knicks? And tell me what you think about KO. Because I think KO um, is going to be valuable to some teams out there. Alwyn, yes, exactly. He's an ideal backup center for a contender. I'm correct. Correct. And that's valuable. And that's very valuable. He's an ideal backup center, and he could play 
if a team is playing power ball, he can play the power forward too. If the team is playing power ball. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, what happens. Teams play power ball in the league still. You know what I'm saying? We still got teams in the league that play some power ball. They may not play power ball all the time, but you got teams in the league that play some power ball. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out. What's popping, man? Hello? Hello? Emmanuel, do uh, do I have you on the line? Maybe not. Maybe we gotta try to give me a call back, bro. Try to give me a call back. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's see who we got here. Hello, who, who I got here? Q. Yeah, this Q. What's popping, man? How you feeling? Uh, maintaining. You know, I ain't get to see the Nick game, but. I've, I've been listening to the show. You know, I'm I'm riding, just getting off of work. Uh huh. I don't understand what these people be talking about, man. Um, these fake Nick fans that's on here. I think they just want to be on here just to talk. I've been hearing about how you was talking, how they were saying that uh, um, Lance Thomas is a bum. Lance Thomas is an all-around basketball player to me. He was talking about Frank is a bum. They don't understand what point guard is. Frank yeah. is what we need. Frank is what Frank is going to change how point guards are looked at today. When he develop and get better, which I uh-huh. think he's a great point guard right now, he's only going to get better. Okay. What they talking about, Kylo Quinn? How they say he don't play defense? Who who are these people that's looking at these games? They're fake Nick fans. Yeah, that, that, that befuddles me. I can't. I don't understand how you can say Kyle Quinn doesn't play defense. Everyone's going to have defensive lapses every once in a while. You know, someone's going to get scored on. Someone's going to get dunked on. Something like that's going to happen every once in a while. But for the most part, Kyle Quinn plays decent defense. This boy, Kyle Quinn works hard. He plays yeah. defense. There's no way in the world you are a hustler and you don't play defense. I've right. never seen one hustler don't play defense. I hear you. I hear you. I, I mean, you know, sometimes New York Knicks fans' expectations um, are a little bit over the top, right? We expect every single one of our players to be an all-star sometimes. Sometimes that's what it feels like. Let's say that. You know what I'm saying? See, what they want, they want a big name. We don't, most of the times you don't need a big name. If you got a whole bunch of, um, how do you say it, second, like, like how Scotty was to Jordan or John Starks was to Patrick Ewing, if you got a whole bunch of those John Starks, you uh-huh. don't need a star player. You don't need a big name. You don't think you need somebody that can get it done you for just, you, though? I mean, God, I'm listening. I, I mean, I agree, I agree with you. I think, you, you know, you got to have, a lot of very good players. You know what I'm saying? I think, especially when playoff comes, you got to have one of those guys, at least one of those guys that can get it done for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one of those guys that can really get it done. But I, I, I see saw. where you're coming from. You got to, you know, if you got a team of, of really, really good players, they may not be all-star or, or superstars, but you got a team of players that could be fringe all-stars, and all stars some years and, and and things like that, you can put together a really really good team. You know what I'm saying, but I think as I think you gotta have one of them guys that can go get it for you though. It doesn't have to be every player though, because you gotta have guys that's gonna hustle. Because when you got one of those guys like a KP that can, well, hopefully KP. Let me say hopefully KP that can really go get you a bucket. Them guys. You know that that's their role. Their role is to take on that that to take that on. You gotta have the other guys that's gonna jump on the floor, scrape up their knees. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna battle under the boards. You gotta have them guys. And KO is one of them guys. Lance, while I wish he could, his offense could could bring a he could pick up his offense a little bit. He's also one of those guys that you need. 
I believe. I'm saying that's gonna do the dirty work, not complain about minutes, do the dirty work for you. You need some of those who, guys out there. Who did you say? Uh Lance. Lance Thomas. Why is he why is he on the Knicks for so long? Four different coaches and he, he haven't got kicked off yet? Because, why? Because he played he's an all around player, defense and offense. Like he does his part. And that's what type of players you need. You need mm -hmm. the players that just do your part. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and Lance Thomas is one of the guys I think they'll keep around. As much as people want him traded, and I'm not going to lie, I soured on him a little bit. There was a point in the season this year where I didn't think he was playing great defense and he wasn't scoring, and I was like, okay, what are you if you're not doing that, then what are you going to do? But but he's maybe he went through something, who knows, but he's, he's playing very mm -hmm. good defense again. You know, and um, he he's like, uh, you know, he's a he's he's a good role model for the young guys on how to work, stay consistent, uh, as, at least defensively. You know, he doesn't complain about minutes. He just comes in, like you said, he comes in and he does his job to the best of his ability. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think he's going anywhere. People, a lot of people complain about him. I don't think he's going anywhere. How? If you get rid of him. Who do you got that can play those two positions, small forward and power forward? Sometimes, like yeah. who you got that can play defense on those two positions? Nobody. I agree with you, one hundred percent. Nobody. Nobody. We getting all these players that we want to score, but we're not getting these defensive players. The defensive player that we getting, we're not having them in at the same time. Yeah. If we get. If we sit there and make a, a old Detroit team, like the one that won that championship with Ben the Beast, if uh -huh. we make one of those, we could uh, Warriors and stuff. I don't care how good they are. Okay. When you got people that's locking down people, you I hear good. You. You're right. I hear you. You're right. I agree with you 100%. We need them kind of players. Hey, Q, man, I'm going to let you go. I know we got some other people Frank I want to call in. There. Frank sits there and, and, and takes the ball from people all the time. Why are y'all not leaving him at? Why are y'all not letting him play his defense? Where once he knocked that ball off, everybody else, all, all y'all need to do is run. He's going to yeah. get it to you. Yeah, you're right. And Frank played 33 minutes, 30, 31 minutes tonight. Finally, you know, he's starting to get those minutes. But, uh, hey, thank you for the call, man. And, and I agree with a lot of your points, too. I appreciate the call, bro. Thanks. All right, peace out, man. All right, too. Now, for sure, people. You know, let's talk about let's talk about the Knicks' defense a little bit, though. All right, because you know, in the beginning of the season, in the beginning of the season, we were playing decent defense. Now, all of a sudden, and, and I guess part of it is due to, well, you know, when we got to January, end of December, after Christmas. Defense just fell off, you know what I'm saying? And I want to talk about maybe what happened, but you know we got we we got a caller on the line, Emmanuel. This is Emmanuel, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's popping, bro? How you feeling? Chill. I'm good. I'm good. It was good chat. It's all right, man. I'm you know doing what I can do out here. You know. I feel you. Um, what you want to talk about? I want to talk about 2019, man. All right. Um. 2019, we need. What we need to do is we need to build a cast, a cast of characters that are solid around a good player. Right. We need to be the cutest girl at the prom, bro. Mm -hmm. We we need we need to look cute. We need to look cute because if we don't look cute, we're not gonna attract no players to come play with us. Right. Who's gonna wanna Who's gonna wanna dance with the ugly girl? Nobody. <laughs> You're right. So sure. we need to we need to be out there. We need to be we need to be setting the pieces for 2019 because we could talk to, about 2019 until until we until whatever. But it's not gonna get to that point. Nobody's gonna want to come here. We're not looking good. We got KP. Yeah, that's cute. But if we only got KP and we don't got the pieces that that attract players to want to come here, like yo, they only a piece or two away. Let me. I need to I need to get on board to that. I hate you. I hate talking about this guy, but that's what LeBron does. Mm -hmm. You see, LeBron, he he goes to where they just missing a piece or two. Right. And that's what everybody's doing right now. Um, Melo did it with OKC. Um, 
that's what that's if if you're a team that looks good that looks like you're gonna contend and yeah and you're just missing a piece people are gonna come and follow so i think we're gonna be bad until trade if we we're gonna start shaping out our team. I think that's gonna end up shaping around next um the end of next free agency. When KP's KP is set to come back and um the team is 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 starting to form right. into that twenty nineteen team. Right. Also, I don't think you get rid of Kylo Quinn, bro. I agree. I don't think I don't think you do either. I, I I think Kylo Quinn is a valuable piece. He's one of those guys, like you said. You know, you gotta put, you gotta have, you gotta have pieces that build around these guys, right? I'm just afraid that they're looking at 2019, and they say they want to be players in the in, in the market, in the free agent market in 2019. That they're not they're not gonna want to give out any contracts past 2019. I don't I don't think they're gonna do that. You know, because you can't have an empty roster and then expect people to want to come play for you. That's true, but I don't think they're gonna have money in 2019 either. If they I don't, don't, I don't if, think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be. They're gonna completely wipe out to try to get two max players like um. No, like pro- like LA. Because LA probably try right to get now one. is way more attractive. LA guy, look at their rookies compared to yep, ours. Exactly. So they're way more attractive for anybody to go play with, and they got the two. They got two max contracts available for whoever wants to come play with them right so that's something that the knicks need to copy now i don't think the knicks gonna try to trying to get like two max contracts either nah, not right. at all but, but if I they think... want to get one if they if they if they're really trying to get one in 2019 then i think they, they're going to be really frugal and, and well, really paying attention to that salary cap i agree and that 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 starts with this draft class so it's important for us to to pick up somebody that is gonna be able to come in and put in work right away because right now frank i only seen the first half of the game and frank he was putting up shots he was looking despite them not falling there were shots that were in and out yep he was, get, he was right, getting there exactly they were right there. there they were there were shots that once they start falling, everybody's gonna think different about Frank. Yep, that's so right. So Frank, Frank, Frank is not—he's not too far along. He might be a season and a half away mm-hmm. from being from being uh, uh, a dude that can really make an impact on the game. Right. And he don't let pressure come to, get to him either. He's only 19 and he's not faced by the pressure. Right. So I think Frank is gonna Frank is gonna shape out. If we get a small, a valuable small forward, we're gonna be straight. I think Hardaway can move back to the two where he belongs. Frank, Frank could guard three positions, so he could. He, Hardaway, he takes, he takes, um, he takes positions off. Um, damn, what's that should go? He takes, he takes off on um defense once in a yeah, while. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes a break. Yeah, takes he takes a break. Takes a break. He don't play. He don't play defense. The whole time he's out there, but Frank, right. Frank could cover three positions, from from PG to to small forward. So, mm-hmm. and we don't know if he's gonna grow into two either. So he could end up being a small forward in the future. You don't know that, right? You're right, right. So Frank, so Frank is Frank is valuable. Don't don't people who need to stop sleeping on Frank. Keep Kylo Quinn, Courtney Lee. He's getting old. I don't know. He's he's what thirty two. Courtney Lee is thirty two. Right. He's around 32, so I now, don't know. I don't know what his future is with the Knicks right now. Right, and, and you know if they want to keep Kylo Quinn, like Kylo Quinn has a player option for four million dollars next year. It'd be beautiful if he if he if he just played out his contract. But I think he's probably feeling that he can be more valuable on the market. We'll see though. He likes New York. He likes New York. He said it. He he you said it himself. Saying? He was like, he likes being home. He likes being with his family. Yeah. He likes but being in if, New York and. Right. If 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 you know if the Knicks really want to keep Kylo Quinn, you know Courtney Lee. I like Courtney Lee. You know what I'm saying. I think he's a good guy, a locker room guy to have around the young guys. But he does make twelve million dollars a year. You know, maybe there's something they could pull off. You know, during the draft or whatever, or during free agency, some kind of trade where you free up some money using Courtney Lee, 
who knows you know what I'm saying and then you free up a little uh, enough money where you can re-sign Kylo Quinn if he opted out so I mean I think there's some things that they can do and I'm pretty sure they're looking and preparing and have some kind of plan put in place because you're the right only, you, the, you know the only, Kyle, the only Kyle, thing about the only thing about it my fault the only thing about it is that I want I feel like we need a true a true rock in the middle mm -hmm. like you see Stephen Adams right he's a rock in the middle yeah if we had a rock in the middle mm -hmm. we'll be a different team like because we don't we don't KP could stretch what we need is people that could stretch the floor get people that could stretch the floor have a big man in the middle cutting pat a, a cutting we need to be a cutting team that could stretch the floor Mm -hmm. That's what I like. Yeah, that that's what, and yeah, I mean, we, we definitely need that. And so we, we need to be able to stretch the floor. Um, I mean, O'Quinn can't really take it out to three right now, but he can, he can, he can hit that mid range shot. Yeah, you know, what like I'm you seen with 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 Luke Cornett. Uh huh. What I was noticing in the first half was, um, he will come out for the three. And then that whole area, that whole painted area was empty. Yep. There was no mix. None. Yep. Say if we had a big man there, and say like if that was KP and we had a big man there, uh huh. That's an easy, easy two, that's an easy bucket. Right. And and so, right. And, and that's that's the that's the the tough spot when you got the, the thing about cancer, right? Because cancer can't spread the floor. And the way the game is played today, you need that middle open up so you can, like you said, you know, corner opens up the floor. You can send KP flash into the middle because it's wide open or, you know, and, and someone who's flexible, someone who is versatile that can get in there, you know, have a few moves. Now, of course, Cantor can still be valuable if you can spread the floor and then send Cantor in there. He could score in the post all day. But, yeah, you got to be able to spread that floor out wide. Yeah, man, I don't know. These Knicks, and I'm not. I, at first, I was high on Perry, uh -huh. but um, I read some articles and I seen, I seen a lot of players that he drafted. And before people start talking on the chat, yeah, I really need to, yeah, I really need to look up Scott Perry and see some of the decisions he's made. Mm -hmm. The decisions that he made himself weren't didn't turn out to be that great. But decisions that he made within a group, mm -hmm. those were better decisions. He did draft like two or three players out of 12 years or 12 draft, 10 draft classes, whatever it was. And only like three, three or four of them came into fruition yeah. and being great players. But that's that's the look of the draft yeah. also. Right. And well, so, well, you know, he's never had the helm all to himself either. So, And he really doesn't now either because he's he with... He doesn't. He's with Steve he's Mills. With, Exactly. Right. He still so doesn't I have it to himself. So as a Knicks fan, I'm like, damn, like, what is what is what it's gonna be? Like, are they gonna end up messing this up? And I'm and some articles I'm reading that they look at for another point guard that now what they're trying to do is quietly move Frank into a shooting guard and dr look for a point guard. That's why Frank has been off the ball so much. Right. And I think they, that's a mistake. And they trying to develop him into a, a shooting guard instead of letting him run the point himself. Yeah, I, so, yeah, I think that's a mistake. Yeah, I really so do. I've been I've been reading and I've been doing my research and I'm like, damn. So they they quietly they quietly shitting on Frank and it's like, come on, like don't do that to the rookie. You see this dude, he has his arm around Moody all day, like, mm -hmm. and Frank been around and I'm wondering how Frank feels. Yeah, no. I know. I know. One right, because you know, it's like the kid is seven months into his NBA career. And it's like they're giving you know up on him. It's like seven months into his NBA career, and now you're talking about moving him to another position, moving him to you know, to be a shooting guard or something like that. You know, we'll see if that, you know, may, maybe they maybe they're trying to do it for now until he develops into a point guard, but I think you gotta play him at that point guard spot. I I just think you got to play him. I think I think he has the instincts to be a way better point guard than any point guard that's on our team. 
Oh, he needs to you know do it. Once he starts hitting them shots, it's over. Because he's already starting to get by people. We've seen that today. Yeah. He's you know. already starting to blow by people. His shots, once them shots start falling, yeah, and he and he gets a little bit of a quicker release. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be set. He's gonna be right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, yo, thank you for the call, man. All right, no doubt. I appreciate the call. All right, peace out, bro. Peace. Yeah. So, right now we got we we got a hot pot of players right now. You know, I mean. With the players we have on the team, there's almost no rhyme or reason. And I, and I think Scott Perry, Steve Mills, they got to look at everything and, and really make a decision on what our team, what kind of team we're going to be. Because we, you know, we, we just got a hodgepodge of players that I'm not sure they, they really go together at all right now. You know what I'm saying? Um. They, you know, they, they gave their philosophy and said, you know, you want young players that's going to play hard, play defense. Um, but then you traded one of those young players that you said was part of the future. You know, uh, and, and things change. You got Sometimes you got to veer away from your plan and, and, and make other decisions. I get that. You know, I think with Frank, if you're trying to push him into a shooting guard spot, I think you're making the wrong decision because he's not that. I think he is a point guard by heart, and um, and, and I think that's what they where they need to develop him. You know what I'm saying? He wants to distribute. You know, he wants to get other people involved. I think that's what we got to do. You know, but we didn't get a chance to talk about this defense though because our defense has been horrible. Right, our defense has been really, really bad. And when we started the year, when we started the season, we had at least a decent defense. That was part of the reason why we were playing well and was able to, uh, part of the reason we were able to have the, you know, the, the kind of record we had in the first half of the season. You know, but then after Christmas, our defense really started to slide. And I'm just wondering what it was. Is it just that we just weren't that good and we didn't have uh, the ability or the players to keep the consistency up? Or were there other reasons, other internal reasons, you know? Uh, and now our defense is just atrocious. And part of that is because we have, well, you know, we're playing just a, a hodgepodge of players and, you know, when you're playing defense, you really, yeah, defense, you can get by with hustle, but you also got to have some coordination on defense, you know, because then, you know, offenses can use a lot of trickery. They're going to use a lot of, you know, different type of actions to confuse the defense. And if you're not communicating well on defense, if you don't understand what other players are going to do or like to do, you're going to get killed. And that's what we're seeing right now, I think, you know. But what happened in the middle of the year? Because that's a big part of the reason why we ended up being here. Our defense uh, uh, just fell off real quick. You know what I'm saying? Fell off real quick. Ron Martinez, what's popping, man? I got you on the line. What's what's popping, bro? What's going on, Simeon? What's going on, chat? How you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm all right over here by the pool with the kids. Okay, in Orlando, that's what's so, up. You know, nice. weather's been crazy. It's nice for uh, Friday night. It was, uh, it was 46 degrees, so this weather's crazy. It's going up and down. Yeah, so yeah. Makes no yeah. makes no sense. So one minute it's cold, one minute we had a pool. So right, <laughs> Guys, everybody it's, confused, it's, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, man. Like like the like the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just like our Knicks, confused. Everything's nothing but confusion going on yeah. over here. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, I listened to the last caller that you was talking to, and um. And I agree with you. You know, if we're going to lose, okay. You know, we, we already know that, you know, going into the game, you know, we're, we're the underdogs. But like you said, we've been talking about this for I don't know how many weeks. Hustle and defense, you know, just play right. defense and hustle. I, I, I can handle losing if you give me effort, you give me defense. But if you're just going to let guys come in here and just like run you out the gym, I mean, I just, you know, there's no excuse for that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? There's no excuse. And, <clears throat> you know, like, 
we started off the season playing decent defense, and then somewhere along the line, it went, it, it just went south. I see some people, you know, say, you know, talk about coaching, which I agree. You know, some of it's right. coaching rotations, right? right. Um, but it just mm-hmm. went south, and now we play horrible defense. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's it's like really, it's real bad. You know, and that's why that's why I bring it up to you because your coach. And I'm pretty sure your point of view is a bit different than from a fan. So as a mm-hmm. coach, I'm pretty sure you see the game differently than the average fan. Just like a, uh, just like when we watch the games, like you know, sometimes these commentators on 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 the news, like NBA TV or ESPN, you know, sports writers view the game one way, but when you talk to former players, they see the game right. totally different. Exactly. Exactly. You know. You know. So it's sometimes as a fan, I think sometimes it's good to have interactions with not just fans, but talk to people who play the game, talk yep. to people who coach the game. And, and I'm pretty sure you see a perspective. Like I, I know that when you watch the game, you can say this guy's not doing the pick and roll right. This oh, guy's yeah. not playing. Yeah, you, know, you you see things that the average fan totally misses. You know? Right, right. And, and and I see it all the time when you know where people are supposed to rotate, when they're supposed to rotate, right. and you know they miss those rotations, and it looks like it's somebody else's fault. Like the thing with Cantor, a lot of people blame Cantor when this guy scores 20, right. 25 points, but a lot of right. that has to do with guards. Not right. fighting over the screen so that they right. can get back to their man. Cantor helps right. out. Now they're now Cantor's guy is rolling to the basket. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the backside guy, you know, guy, someone, if Cantor helps, there's right. there's another guy that's supposed to recognize that Cantor helped and they come right. over to help. Right. Cantor's right. on on Cantor's man. And it never happens. Right. And you know, and you know, get, getting back to cancer, because this is something that I forgot to mention the last fall. You know, remember a few days ago, because actually I've been out of it because my hours have been, my, my work schedule was so crazy. I haven't been catching all the games, especially all these late West Coast games. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but uh, I remember you and me were talking the other day about Jerry West, you know, being a consultant. And, you know, even though we say that's a consultant, but we really know that behind the scenes, he's probably really the one really making this, making right. this making the, the major decision. You know, you don't pay somebody to be a, a consultant unless you really value their opinion. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, but my, my main concern with the Knicks, and again, it's like, like when it comes to the salary cap, just because a guy knows how to how to manage a salary cap, that don't mean he's a basketball guy. Maybe you just let, let that guy, your guys are good with numbers and some guys are good with talent. You know, right. it's like sometimes you have to have more than one person in the front office. And I worry about the Knicks because – I hear the last caller talking about what we need to get in the draft or what we need to add to the team. I'll give, I'll give you, I'll, let me give you a, hypo, uh, a hypothetical situation. Let's say it's 2019. Mm-hmm. Frank develops to be a really good point guard. And he, every year he gets better. He gets better. Now you find out, let's say hypothetically, Kyrie Irving, he doesn't sign an extension. And he tells Boston, there's only one place I want to go to, New York. What right. do you do? Right. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Because right there you have a young point guard, but then you have a, a an established player. You know, mm-hmm. let's say he was a championship. Well, I'm not saying he will, but let's say he was a championship with Boston. But even with that championship, he said, "Listen, I did my job. I don't want to sign an extension. Boston's going to trade him." Right. You know, because they, they're not going to let the guy walk. So there, the Knicks going to be pressured that the Knicks have to have a backup plan. Then let's say, let's say Frank is your number one option. But what if Kyrie's at the door saying, listen, I want to come play for Which you know a lot of play. What do you do? You have to be able to make that move. And if you don't make that move, you have to say, okay, either Kyrie Irving's not coming here or Frank is the future. Because if Frank starts getting better, that's going to be a hard decision. Say, what do we do? Mm-hmm. Or do you play Kyrie Irving and Frank Nilakina in the backcourt? Like you say, if they're trying to switch him to the off guard, which I don't agree they should do that, but you see what I'm saying? So that's what it comes down mm-hmm. to. You have to have a basketball guy Somebody that knows how to make the pieces fit together. Right. And exactly. Know? And that's what you got to. That's what you got to do. You got to have the basketball guy, just like in any other business, right? Yeah. You got. Yeah. The, you got the person who. Okay, this is the plan. This is the vision, and then yeah. you got the guy that says, "Okay, this is your vision. Now, here's how the money works." Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, because you got specialists in different areas, and you, it's very hard to have someone that can do both. Can't, and course, I, 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 and I, know, I don't I think just, in basketball it can happen. No, no, no. And I think right now in sports is 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 common in in uh, it's very popular in baseball and basketball. You have a lot of these guys where analytics guys where they were probably IT guys in college, never played sport, but they know numbers. You know, they know statistics, but they don't know basketball. You know what I'm saying? They don't right. know. 
You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you get those guys in the front office, you're like, why the hell did we trade for this guy? Why did we sign this guy? Because the numbers say, but sometimes you can't just go by numbers. Right. You got to go by the eye test. You gotta, exactly. Sometimes you got to go by the eye test. But the eye test, you know? And it's like, so, because I remember when we had Amari, and he came over to the Knicks for the first time, it was like, okay, nobody wants to come to the Knicks, then we got Melo. And a lot of people were saying, well, they're two great players, but they said you can have two great players, but if the pieces don't fit, they don't right. fit. Sometimes, sometimes a, a player, you can have two great, but if they don't complement each other, it doesn't matter how great the player is. If they don't complement the other player, you know? It's not going to work. That was one of the reasons why Boston, way back when they got Ray Allen, uh, you had Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and KG. Those pieces uh -huh. fit perfectly. And the year before, they had well, how many wins? Like 30 wins? Like, 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 yeah, like 20 wins. And, yeah. and you brought them guys in, they won a championship the same year because the pieces fit perfectly. It was like, it was like magic. It was right. like when you, boom, you know? Yep, the pieces and, fit perfectly. And, and the only reason really with, to me, with Miami, is because right. LeBron was so good. Those pieces didn't really fit to me with LeBron and D. Wade because they, but like the reason why it fit to me in Boston is because Ray right. Allen could play without the ball. He didn't need the ball. He could come off screens. Paul right. Pierce was the guy that could go ISO. KG, right. you could get them, get him the ball in the post, but he didn't have to have the ball to be effective. He could rebound. He could block shots, and he could pass right. the ball. You know right. what I'm saying? So those pieces fit. And then you had Rondo, who was a natural distributor. Exactly. Right. So those pieces fit perfectly together. Exactly. In Miami, they, the pieces didn't really fit, but LeBron is LeBron. So right. And sometimes some of those players, I mean, because before Kevin Car Garnett came to the Celtics, he didn't do nothing. He didn't take. I mean, the, I mean, he had some success with Mar Mar Seth and Marbury in Minnesota, but they didn't win no championships. Right. They didn't have. They didn't have deep uh, playoff runs. But he comes to Boston, all of a sudden, boom! They, they, you know, they climb over the hump and they win a chip. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's man. like so. And and sometimes I think as fans, we have to be, we have to kind of know how to put everything in categories. It's like okay, sometimes it's coaching, sometimes it's the player, sometimes it's the, like I give an example. I remember when Pat Riley came to New York, everybody felt that he was overrated as a co coach because he had Magic Johns, he has all these Hall of Famers in LA. But you really got to know he, uh, his coaching it, when he came to New York because he didn't have. Showtime in New York, so that's when you got to find out. Oh, this man really can coach because a right. lot of people felt like any. Everybody people say, "Oh, anybody can coach that team." Until he came to New York, like, what you gonna do now? You don't have Showtime. Mm -hmm. You know. So sometimes, you know, I think it has to do is you have to have the right coach, the right players, the right, and, and that's what it comes down to is do you have the right basketball guy or basketball people in that front exactly. office? Because we exactly. we're gonna go through this cycle over, over and over and over and over. Right. I'm behind. Think about how many coaches and players we have. It's like a like a turnstile we have in, in the Knicks. It's like one coach comes in, one coach goes out. One coach comes in. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's frustrating, you know. I mean, even when Mike Woodson was there, and I'll tell you right now, Mike Woodson, I really thought he was one of our best coaches uh, as of late. I mean, you know, of course, you know, you know, he, he got let go, but he helped he held players accountable. You know, I think he was a very good coach, but. He was, you know, in a wrong situation. Wrong you know? situation. And, 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 yeah, and, yeah, it was wrong situation. It, it was Phil Jackson's, in that Phil, whole Phil Jackson situation. Yeah, you know, and it's like it's so frustrating. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you look at Phil Jackson, you know, people say, well, why did he get so much money as a, well, because he had, look at look at the, his resume. Uh, he's never been a front office guy, but look at the players he's had over the years. And, and you notice in some of those teams, like with L.A., L.A. knew what it was to have a bunch of good players. And Phil Jackson comes in there. So sometimes some players, like you can have a superstar team, but if you, the coach doesn't know how to manage all those egos, right. then it doesn't matter how many players. Exactly. So sometimes you need a player. Like there's some coaches that when they walk into the room, everybody like chill. Everybody, oh, this, this, you know, this guy's in the room. But sometimes, you know, you got these million-dollar ball players making more money than the coach. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like I, like I look at Steve Kerr. I don't see him. I see Steve Kerr when he's more like a, He's like another buddy on the on the team because I see the way he talks. With, but I don't see him as a, like a Phil. When Phil Jackson came into L.A., boom, because they needed to get over the hump too until he got it. Kobe right. was frustrated. I mean, Kobe went one time wanted to get traded. He was like, "I'm out of here." Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, remember and, that? and honestly, man, with Phil Jackson, I mean, if you honestly look at it, I mean, he brought some players to the team, and his vision, right. His vision of the, the the kind of guys he brought in. Everyone wants to focus on a triangle, 
right? And, and it was kind of crazy that he's telling, you know, the coaches to run a triangle know. And, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all right, I get, I get yeah. all that. Yeah, but that's kind of crazy. If, if you think about the style of players he was bringing in, it was a style uh -huh. of players that fit today's NBA. He want all versatile guys from every position. Right. You know, he wanted versatile guys from every single position that can that can play in all aspects of the game. And he's that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Right. You know, and you know, that's the and that's the that's the kind of basketball he was trying to play. Maybe the right. triangle is antiquated. Maybe, you know, it needed to be updated and, and to be able to play this today's game a little bit more, you know, shoot you know, shoot more threes, not as many mid range. But the idea I understood the idea. I think, you know, uh, it, it, he couldn't get out of his own way with his ego and those type of things. But I believe he had the right idea of wanting to play good team basketball and play with versatile players. Right. And I think in today's game, which, kind of, which is kind of like I, I hear all the time, I mean, in today's game, who's really a great def – I mean, there's a, there's a few guys, but who's really a – you don't have to make great defensive ball plays these days. It's all about offense. Yeah, and that's, so, and, yeah, you know the, like, the NBA killed that a long time ago. Exa for exactly. The, for the so money. Guys, guys, yeah, like, like, which guy goes in and goes, oh, my God, I had 10 rebounds. I had five steals. I had a good game. Some guys are like, no, nah, I score. Uh, some, these guys don't get, they don't get off on that. They get off like, oh, I dropped 34 points and, or 40 points and, or 25 yeah. points in one quarter. But how many guys get excited to say, hey, I had 10 assists? Today? Like, Jason Kidd is the type of guy where he can have five points. But he would have like twelve assists, fifteen rebounds, and eight points. Right. And he, he would consider a, he would consider that a good game. A Most good guys game. Were like, yeah. he didn't do nothing. Yeah. You know. Hey, hey, so, Ron, man, I appreciate the call, man. You know, all right, bro, dropping good some good, good stuff, man. You, man. Yeah. Hey, enjoy the weather down there, bro. I try to do my best, man. I try to get over these allergies over yeah, here. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> all right, man. Later. All right, brother. Peace, Peace bro. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on with these New York Knicks, as usual, as always. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, getting back to our defense, you know, our defense, um, I don't know, took a turn for the worse. We never got it back. And I seen you guys had a lot of uh, a lot of answers to that question. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and I think everything that you guys said is right. You know, you guys talked about, um, you know, holding sex rotations and, 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 um, like Ron just talked about, sometimes, you know, our players don't know what, didn't know where to be, didn't know where to go. Some of that goes back to coaching. Some of that just goes back to the instinct of the players because you can have a coach that teaches and teaches and teaches. And then the players, at this age, these guys have habits that they're, it's going to be very, very hard for them to break. And this is why it's important that you really pick the right players. Like Ron was just saying, you got to pick the right players that fit because at the age that these guys are, when you're bringing them into the NBA, they've developed a lot of habits. And if you don't bring in the right guys that have the right, the right habits, um, if you don't bring in the guys that have the right instincts, both deep defensively and offensively and guys that can play off of each other, then you're going to struggle and your coaches are going to struggle, even if they're trying to teach. And sometimes on this level, in theory, you, you figure you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to teach much on the NBA level. But guys are coming into the league uh, not coached well. Uh, some of it is based off of, you know, what's happening in AAU. And then they get into college and they're one and done. So they don't get that much coaching. So now guys got to come into the NBA and um, get coached and get taught. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, sometimes you can bring guys in and, 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 and teach them up grow them up with the right kind of fundamentals. Some guys come in with bad fundamentals and you're not going to change them. You know, it's going to be very hard to change them. So you really got to do your scouting. Uh, you know, you got to go out, see what guys can do and, and really look at the way a guy plays basketball, then decide if you want to bring them in or not, not just bring in any player. You know, it's got to be guys that fit, guys that have the, 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 the skill sets that you want. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hey, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Siobhan, Sean, uh, Siobhan. Uh, of course, thank you for the super chat. But, uh, you know, 
much love to your wife, man. You say your wife is in the hospital, so you can't stay. Peace out to the gods and the earth. I feel you, bro. And um, you know, I hope everything is right with the family, man. Take care of your family, brother. Peace out. All right. Uh, so let me get on to Ronald Cleveland. What's popping, my man? Man, Simeon, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Man, 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 man. Here we go again, man. You know, we, you know, this, this is a, is a reoccurring theme, man. If it ain't, you know, like, what's the, what's the definition of insanity? Yeah. Do the same thing over you know, and over reason, again. And, and I'm, and I'm listening to the chat, man. And the thing is, and what's up to the chat, by the way. The reason why we keep getting blown out is simple, simple basketball. Mm -hmm. Stay in front of your man. That switching defense, I don't understand when that ever even started. Because, I mean, if you think about it realistically, back in the days with the, the 90s Knicks team and those teams back in the days, that's why I always say when they try to compare this era of basketball to that era, there's no comparison. Them guys played straight-up defense, and those teams would wipe these teams off the floor just on the defensive side alone. And, and Boston kind of remind me, this Boston team now kind of remind me of those younger, those teams back in the days. Right. They're gritty. They don't have great players, but when it comes to the defensive side, they're committed. They're committed to play and, and guard their man and stay in front of them. And, and even Hardaway today, man, I, I watched that kid, one play in particular where he just, to me, just, just reached. Not using his feet on defense, just reached. I'm like, that's just the stupidest thing you could do as a ball player. You know they're going to call a foul on that. Right. And and just just looking at it, man. I mean, Jeff. I mean, that that's 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 dead. It, it's it's time for him to go, like like it's been been echoed many times before. But when we look at our team, man, it starts on defense. You're not going to win if you don't have players committed on the defensive end. And that's why every time, if you notice in those third quarters, we always getting killed. Teams mm -hmm. come out and they play harder, and we and we come out and we playing soft. We we're, yeah. we're a soft team. And and that kid, that Williams kid, I love him. Yeah. I love him. He should be playing more. He I played love six him. minutes today. Yeah, that's 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 stupid. That, that's played, stupid. So so Troy Williams played six minutes, and someone brought it up in the chat earlier. But Troy Williams played six minutes, and Michael Beasley played twenty nine minutes today. And he ain't giving us nothing. I you love know, I love Mike. Um, I love Mike, but he right now something's going on that we don't know because it, it, it's it's something going on. Yeah, and, and I, I don't understand. I Listen, yeah, Mike Beasley, we know what he can do. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to play him, play him. I get that. But, you know, play Troy. Might as well play Troy Williams. He's been playing well. What's the purpose of only giving him six minutes today? Why? I, see that, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it at all. That's why Jeff is going to get fired because there's no yeah. direction with the team. There's really no direction. It's it just like... He comes out, he tries to win the game. You know, uh, initially he'll put in the, the rookies or whatnot, the young guys. And then if he see where the game is kind of close, he's bringing the veterans in and, and resting those guys, the young guys on the bench. And I'm like, what are you doing? The guys who got you in the game, you're putting them on the bench. Yeah. And immediately, yeah. I don't know if you remember when you saw when, when Troy came in the game, the one play in particular where he ripped, I mean, he ripped the guy so clean and went and dunk on the other end. Right. And I yep. remember the article, reading the article like in the New York Times, and they were saying how the kid came in and immediately they saw his defensive effect where he was causing havoc, ripping players in practice. And I'm like, you don't put this guy on the floor? Yeah. You can find any fool to go out there and shoot a basketball, but people committed to the defensive side of basketball, those days pretty much are gone in basketball. And when you find one, you need to play him. Yeah. You need to play him. Yep. And that's, 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 that's my real knock on... on on Jeff, and that's why this season is really a lost season. Of course, we know KP went down, but really, Jeff really has blown his opportunity with this team because there's no direction. I and mean, you don't have no direction, man. You're not going anywhere. You're yeah. not going anywhere. Who want to come to New York and play? Do we I, have an identity? Right, and we have none right now. We have a high spot of players. We have no identity whatsoever. You talk about starting from the ground up. That's where we are right now. Yeah, Starts ground zero. Ground we had ground zero. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really, zero. as a Knicks fan, man, I'm just, I'm just really sick of it, man. And I'm going to tell you something I did the other night, Simeon, man, the first time ever that I can ever recall. What's that? Shut the game off, man. Yeah. I turned the game off in the third quarter because of the same stuff I saw today, man. I'm like, you know what? This dude's an idiot to even support it. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to stop. 
the stuff that we're seeing in, with the, with our Knicks, man, until the fans start saying, hey, you know what? I'm not paying for this product. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying for this. And, and that's the thing, well, man. We're supposed to be sorry like this, man. And see, we're sorry. Is- yeah, one of that you know that's probably not going to happen though. You know, Knicks fans know. are very dedicated, and you know, like the New York, you know, the Knicks are are, are a, they're a pastime favorite. You know what I'm saying? People come to the come to New York and hey, let's go to a Knicks game. It's something to do, um, and they're worth you know more you know way over a billion dollars, whatever they're worth. Yeah, you know, and, worth, and, that, and that's worth the same thing is, you know? about a business. We got to get back to being a blue collar team, man. We are not, and all these people talking about KO, man, are they crazy? Are they crazy? I won't even comment on that. I won't yeah. comment. These, these 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 idiots, man, that's talking about this dude don't know basketball, and I'm convinced of it. They yeah. they, they know what the idea of basketball is? 2K. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the idea of basketball. It's 2K. Right. Man, yeah, come on, but, man. Um, but yeah, Knicks worth three point six billion. I mean, people are not gonna stop coming. No, nah, they're not gonna stop. I mean, what eight million people in New York City alone? Yeah, yeah, three point six billion dollars, man. It, you know, but um, we you know, we're at ground zero right now. We're at the bottom. You know, uh, you know, we have some talent that we can start to that we can begin to build around. I'm willing to see what Scott Perry does. Yeah, you know, I, how, I, I, how cool. he takes I this. Have a problem with Scott. Yeah, how he takes this mix of characters we got on the team and begins to pick and choose who is going to fit his philosophy of play. But what I do not know still, though, is if I know we established that we want to get young players that play hard, right? Guys yeah. 25 and under. We established that. But what is our philosophy of play? Like, what is it that we want to do? Do we want to be a team that gets up and down the floor? Do we want to team be a team that spreads the floor? Do we want to play fast? Do we want to play slow? Are we a defensive team? Like, like we said, the identity of the team. But that, that has to start with telling players, this is what you got to know what you wanted to, to do so that you know. That was the one thing that I respected about Phil Jackson. Triangle or not, he said, this is the style of play that I want to have, so I want to go get these players. Right? Yeah. I think Scott Perry needs to sit down. He needs to get a coach and say, what is going to be our style of play? Let's look at who we have. What's your philosophy? Yeah, right. And, and I know sometimes if you're a coach, you come in and you can you adjust to the players that you have. Right? Uh, right now, you're at a point, though, where you could come in, you can look at your players and say, okay, what do we want the style of our team to be? And then pick the players that you think fits that style. And as you bring more players in, different players are going to develop in different ways and have different strengths. Then your coach can adjust to those players. And I'm not saying you got to have one system, but a philosophy of play, a style of play. And then you, and then you adjust and you build your system to meet your philosophy and your players. How do you make those two mesh together? The, your your philosophy, you know, we want to be an up-tempo, fast team that plays hard defense and can rebound the ball. So you see what players you have and you begin to build your system with that philosophy in mind, but using the, the strength of the players. This is where we got to start. I don't. I just don't know if we know what that philosophy is, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so too. And I and I tell you this: so far, these people want to talk about Frank. Man, that dude is a true point guard. They need to go really look up what a true point guard is. Don't yeah. get don't get enamored with what you're seeing. These guys right now, these point guards like Steph Curry and Russell Westbrook, these guys are outliers. That's not that's not what a true point guard is. A true point guard gets everybody involved and not looking for his shot his shot initially. Right. They're, they're looking to make everybody else score, and when they score is when within the floor of the offense, when the shot clock is running down, that's when they take shots or when stuff is completely open when they got a, a, a lane to the basket, something like that. But for the most part, their job is to get everybody involved. They are quarterbacks on the floor is what a true point guard is. And what a quarterback does, a good one, gets everybody involved. That's right. And 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 this is the last thing I'll say, and I'm going to let you go, man. I, I really right. think – this is what really hurt us. We talk about the impatience as Knicks fans, the front office. Really, when Phil came, 
I felt like what Phil should have done is left Mike Woodson alone. Because yeah. true indeed, you might have, he needed I agree he needed to, to get some of them guys out of there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the locker room was kind of you know what I mean? It was yep. kind of clicky. He needed to get rid of a few, but he didn't need to do no wholesale changes like he did and get rid of the coach. So now you got rid of a defensive minded coach and the problem in New York, up until Mike Wilson got there, we never had no defensive coach except for when we had Van Gundy and Pat right. Riley. We right. had these coaches that didn't stick. And and then you owed more to Mike Woodson when the guy got the last time we ever won a, a what our, our our division was the last time with him and you couldn't even remember the last time mm -hmm. for a lot of these guys as you know wet behind the ears breath smelling like Similac they haven't seen no division titles in their lifetime right so right. And it's it's just it's, it's a lot of work to be done in New York I'm gonna I'm gonna stick tight I'm gonna ride with us I ain't gonna give up on them but uh Jeff he got to go. And let the guys play straight up defense. And the guys that's young that want to play, let them play. And I don't care how much money they're paying them. If they ain't playing defense, park them on the bench. But all that switching, that's what's killing us. Yeah. That's what's killing us. We switching and putting the point guard on the center. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, exactly. And, and then putting the center on a point guard and expecting the uh, guard them. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's foolishness. Yeah. Right. So, man, hey, you have at it, man. Appreciate what you do. What's Appreciate up to it, the bro. chat? New York Knicks, we'll be back. For sure, man. All right, man. All right. Have a good one, Ron. All right, you too. Yeah. So, Knicks fans, you know, there we have it. Run down to the New York Knicks. So, my question, will the Knicks win again this season? And Ronald, Ronald, man, that was a great call. Really good call. Everybody that's called up, it's been a great call so far, man. You guys are great. You guys make this job... You guys make this easy. You know what I'm saying? You guys make it easy. But will we win another game? You know, we have how many games we got left to this season? 17 games left to the season or something like that. Uh, currently, right now, we've lost seven in a row. Uh, we are 24 and 43. Right, so what's that? Fifteen games left to the season. Will we win another game? Um, it's hard to see it, to tell you the truth. It's hard to see it. It's really hard to see it. You know, this is where we are right now. Uh, probably going to catch. We might catch Chicago on this downswing. Now. Um, but will we I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna get another win this season. But even if we don't, I don't care. I wanna see at least competitive games, man. You know what I'm saying? At least see some competitive games out here because we're not seeing competitive games. And I think if you're gonna have competitive games, you at least I mean if if you're gonna develop young guys, you've gotta have some competitive games. And I'm you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe we could beat Dallas. You know, that's our next game. Dennis Smith Jr. is coming to New York, right? Maybe we beat Dallas. But but right now, we are really one of the worst teams in the league, right? And, and I'm not saying it like, uh, if not the worst team in the league because of the way we have just a hodgepodge of players in there, we're probably the worst team in the league. You know, uh, you know, because we have a mix of players that really haven't played all season together and all this stuff. Um, yeah, you know, we're probably the worst player, worst team in the league right now. Maybe we can beat Dallas. Maybe. Then you got Philadelphia. I doubt we're not going to beat Philly. I doubt it. I don't think we beat Charlotte. Maybe I don't know. I don't think we beat Charlotte. The Bulls. Who knows? Who knows what'll happen there? It's possible that we beat the Bulls. Not gonna beat Miami. Not gonna beat Minnesota. Not gonna beat the Wizards. Probably not gonna beat Charlotte. Not gonna beat Philly again. 
not going to beat the Pistons. Well, I don't know. We could maybe, you know, but for that, with, with that big trade, man, it doesn't seem uh, uh, that, that the Pistons got much better with Blake Griffin, right? Not, uh, we could beat Orlando. Not going to beat Miami. Won't beat the Bucks. We can't handle Giannis. Won't beat the Cavs. And we won't beat the Cavs. So, you know, maybe there's two or three wins left to this season. You know, um, maybe. Now, I would like to see us get one or two just, just so we can get a win. Let the young guys feel what it, you know, get... Let the young guys that are getting a lot of burn now, you know, feel what it's like to win with them being one of the, you know, uh, 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 main components on the floor. You know, um, I seen someone ask about strength of schedule. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at strength of schedule between the Bulls and the Knicks. So here we are on Tankathon. Uh, remaining schedule strength. So right now, the Knicks have the 20th. I guess that's the uh, one of the easiest schedules in the NBA if, it, if they were a good team, right? You know, they got Cleveland, Cleveland, Minnesota, the Wizards, Philadelphia twice. Uh, those are the toughest opponents. And then the easiest opponents, then you got Orlando, Dallas, Chicago, Hornets, and the Pistons. Now, when you look at Chicago, there's a little bit easier than ours. They got the Rockets. They got the Celtics. Cleveland, Washington, Clippers, Nuggets. They play Memphis, Orlando, the Hawks, the Nets, and us. All right. So, if you're tanking... You know, the, the harder the schedule, the better, right? If you're tanking. Uh, you know, Dallas. You know, you know all, all the people that are tanking. You know, a lot of the people that are tanking, so-called tanking. You know, have, you know, somewhere in here. You know, who has the toughest? I mean, Phoenix has a tough schedule. Right? 14 games left. Their schedule is pretty tough. They may not win again. You know, Atlanta. You know, they have a pretty tough schedule. They may not win again. You know, so... Um, you know, I mean, the Bulls might win some more games. They might. Uh, their schedule is a bit easier than ours. Not much, but a bit. But, you know, for all this losing, right, for, you know, for all this losing, and give me one second, uh, for all this losing, we're not really, uh, we're not really, Gaining much ground, right? You know, as far as draft, uh, as far as uh, tanking is concerned, we're not gaining much ground for all this losing. So, I, I mean, I don't know. What, I mean, what is it really worth? We're still in that same ninth spot that we were a couple weeks ago. So, you know, what's it all worth? My man, French. French Tell Unicorn, me. what's popping, bro? Tell him, man watching Tiger Woods and listening to you. Yeah, man. So, uh, I mean, how you feeling about it all, man? You know, everything with the tank and all of that, you know, how, how you feeling about it? Makes the Knicks really hard to watch, I'll tell you that. I t Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, uh, today was a little better being that we got to see Cornette. I wish we would have saw a little bit more of Troy. Uh-huh. I kind of think that 
we're sold on Troy, you know, maybe that's why we didn't play him today. Like maybe we're convinced we're going to sign him. Okay. That, that that could be, that's a good, but then why play Beasley over him? You know, why play Beasley so many you minutes? Gotta, I, I believe in that scenario, you got to put some, you know, veterans out there with them because what are you going to do? Just put five guys that don't know what they're doing out there. You got to put somebody that's been there. And plus, I don't know if we're sold on Beasley too. Like, He's probably still auditioning. Yeah. Bring him out there with different guys to see how he acts. I thought Beasley played well today. He, he played well. Out. I think, you know, I, I think, yeah, he played well. He had 10 points. He shot 57% from the field, 10 points, 11 rebounds. That's yeah, a good game. And he shot. He wasn't trying to be a ball hog. Uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, I'll take it. And like I said, I, I don't think that you just throw five guys that don't know what they're doing out there, you know, just. Throw him out there with somebody that, you know, has been there. So you had Tim and him, and then the rest were all Frank and young guys, Moody, guys that were evaluating, I'm assuming. Uh-huh. And the um, other thing is, I have another theory about Frank playing the two is I know everybody wants him to play the one, and so do I. I think that's where his future is. But I think Hornacek's putting him at the two kind of to force him to shoot a little, you know? Today, Maybe. Different shots, and that's definitely better than he's been doing. He didn't hit a lot, but he took 10 shots. I like that. It's right. Time. Right. And, and, you know, that could be. Yeah, that could definitely be that he just wants to force him to shoot, make this guy shoot the ball. Yeah, because you see that he's very reluctant to do that. Mm -hmm. And as much as we knock Jeff, and I'm one of the biggest Jeff haters, you got to give him props when he's actually doing something that's productive, you know? Right. So I yeah. think that that's, you know, we need next year, we need Frank to come in with the mentality that, you know, make the right play, whether it's to score or to pass, not always look to give the ball up. Right, right. Make the Make the right play, whether it's to score or to pass. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Force him to yeah. become more of a scorer, you know. Ten exactly. points. We don't need much from him. Ten yep. points. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. I agree. Um, it's tough to watch. It's definitely tough to watch, yeah, man. It's really you know, hard. You know, it, it's really hard to watch. Especially, you know, like me, you know, I like to win, no matter what it is. I like to win. Who doesn't like to win? I you know like what I'm saying? You know, uh, I, I want to win the ball game. I don't want to, you know, I hate losing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Even, you know, with so-called tanking or whatever it is, I hate to lose. So it's tough to watch. It's good to see some promise, though, to see Cornette. Maybe he's a keeper. I already believe Troy's a keeper. And then you got to see other guys like Moutier. I think we're evaluating. I think uh, Trey Burke, we're evaluating. Uh -huh. These guys are still on like the bubble for me. Right. But I keep Troy. If you could get Troy for like three years on, you know, like a Willie Herman Gomez kind of deal, real cheap, just happy to be in the NBA. I, yeah. I like to get up. He's athletic and we need that more than anything. We need that. Yeah. And I think, um, and I think you can. I think you can get. Right now, I think you could probably get Troy on on a on a decent contract. Yeah, because he's uh, a team friendly contract. Yep, yeah. exactly a team friendly contract, and I think you you take the chance with him. Yeah, I agree. Low money, no risk. What yeah. do you lose? Right, I think you take the chance with him. him. Yeah. And um, you know, I think what they what they should probably do, um, is. You know, sign him. You know, sign him for the remainder of this year after his ten day contract. Sign him for the remainder of this year, and then give him a non guaranteed contract for next year. So a non guaranteed contract that would become guaranteed in January, or something like that. Or maybe you give him next year and then a non guaranteed in the following year, something like yeah. that. Like that. You know, Don't... you know, like a two year contract with the second year not guaranteed. And it becomes guaranteed later on in the season or something like that. Like we did with Tony Roten that year. Remember that contract? Where right. Year and then two non guaranteed years, something like that. Yeah, something. I, I, I yeah. think when you find diamonds in the rough, though, you sign them before they become expensive. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. You know, you don't yeah. want to become expensive. Um, 
but you also, I think, you know, you, you want to make sure that they, they have the incentive to continue working and you keep yourself flexible enough in case something comes along. You know, looking at, you know, looking at CP becomes a trade piece too, though. Yeah, right. But but if you but even if you got him on a non guaranteed contract, he becomes a trade piece. Oh even, yeah, yeah. And he's even a more valuable trade piece because a team can be like, okay, we can trade for him, and if he doesn't work out, we can get rid of him and not have to pay him anything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know, so yeah. those non when you have those non guaranteed contracts, those are those can be valuable. You know what I mean? You know because then a, you know a team could trade for somebody. You know, it, it allows a team to be able to free up money if they want to or to try a player out without being committed to him. So, what's Cornette's deal? Cornette's that uh, G League half and half, right? Yeah, yep. he's one of those two way players. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure how long that deal is, but he's a two way player. And, uh, you know, so I don't he's know if another it's a one. He's another one. If we can lock up cheap, we should do it because he has a lot of NBA tools, you know, the three. I saw a lot of good footwork today when he was playing D. Uh huh. He, he he made that move off the dribble. I like what he does out there as a you know as a role player. I'm not seeing superstar, but right. I I love to see him next to KP for a few 10, 15 minutes a game. Oh yeah, that would be nice. You know what I'm saying? You can pull both of those big guys out uh, yeah. uh, of the uh, out of the lane and then allow some guards to attack. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, and they both could block shots. They both could hit the three. You know, yep. it's a lot of matchup problems when you have those two. I'm yeah, majority. yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, French, thank you for the call, bro. Glad you called in. Hey, pleasure, man. Big shout out. Thank you for that super chat, man. I appreciate All it. Right. Every time, man. No doubt. I appreciate what you do. I love your show. I love the guys. I love the chat. Madi, Tony Crow. Ismail, BNN, all the guys. I don't want, if I forget you, I still got mad love for all of you guys. For sure, man. Appreciate it. All right, Peace man. out, brother. Peace. And so we got a lot of work to do with these New York Knicks. And um, I see my man CP, the artist. I seen you on. I want to make sure that I get this information to you. You know, uh, I wasn't able to get to it. I just put up, uh, you know, how you can uh, Skype in. So if you get a chance, please Skype it in. All right. But it doesn't look like the Knicks is going to win again. Uh, or will have very, very little wins for the remainder of the year. Um, one thing I did want to take a look at. The salary cap this year is set at $99 million. Okay, $99 million. That's where the salary cap is. The Knicks are... And let me... We'll pull this up for you. It's $99 million. The Knicks are about $6 million over. Right? So anything that comes off the books this year, if $2 million comes off the books, you're still $3 million over. Right? If, uh, you know, $4 million comes off the books, you're still $102 million over. You're still you know, $4 million or $3 million over the cap. Or, I'm sorry, if, if $4 million comes off the books, it's still $2 million over the cap. So we have to look at that. And I think that, I think what Scott Perry's job is to do for this summer, to be ready for 2019, is to make sure that the Knicks are below the cap at the end of free agency. Okay. Cap is 99 million. The Knicks are at 105. By the end of free agency, I think the Knicks need to be below the salary cap. You know, uh, I mean, why pay the luxury tax or you know, any kind of luxury tax? Um if you're not winning. It makes no sense. Right? Get below the cap. Because let's say we remain at, let's just say, let's just say, for example, the roster is the same and we remain at 105 million, right? And the cap is still 99 million. 2019 comes. 
cancer comes off the books. You say, oh, we just freed up 18 million. No, you didn't. You freed up 12 million. Right? And so there's a difference there. You know, anybody else comes off the books. You, you don't free up, you know, if, if Courtney Lee comes off the books, he makes $12 million. You know, uh, well, he, he wouldn't really come off the books in 2019. But let's just say, for instance, he did. He came off the books. He makes $12 million. You say, well, we freed up $12 million. No, you didn't. You freed up $6 million. So I think what we need to do is be below the cap so that in 2019, When we go into free agency, we are below the cap. You know, and, you know, so, so, hey, CPDR, I'm going to get with you in one second. So, so that we're below the cap. That way, we're, we're dealing with true numbers when we start to deal in the 2019 free agency. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think that's very, I think that's, that, that's important for us to do. I think that's the job of Scott Perry right now. That's what he needs to do. You know. But what I want to do now, I want to introduce you all. I want to introduce you guys to an artist. Very, very good artist. And if you get a chance, I want you to check him out on, um, on Instagram. So, you know, he's going to get a chance to talk to you a little bit. Uh, you've seen him in the chat, CP the artist. CP, what's going on, man? How you feeling? What's good? Shout out to the chat. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you're able to make it. And first, let me just ask you a little bit, you know, what you feel about the Knicks, man? Man, let me tell you something. You know, like how the song goes, uh, parallel to hell, but you must maintain. Uh-huh. Well... <laughs> I feel you, man. That's the best, man. So, uh, I just think, man, it's just a learning process for, for everybody, man. The young kids, I just want to see them develop, man. That's it. And uh, I'm looking forward to the draft. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you, man. Um, it's tough being a Knicks fan like, you know, me. You know, I like to win. I've been a Knicks fan my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And, and to see us in such a long skid, you know, for the last, since 19, we went to the finals in 2000 and 2000, I think it was, or whatever it was, when we when we lost to the Spurs. It's been almost a, almost two years since mm. we've been able to um, see the Knicks really, really be a contender, and it's tough. You know, as a diehard Knicks fan, it's tough for me, man. It's crazy. But I want to ask you a few questions, man. Um, Go ahead. How'd you become an artist? Because I looked at your work on Instagram and it's amazing. It really is. Well, you know? uh, like like uh, me and you, we're both around the same age, like uh, 40-something. Mm -hmm. uh, I just basically uh, grew up in the hip-hop era and I had to find my niche. So my niche wasn't breakdancing or uh, rapping. It was, you know, graffiti art at the time. And then um, from there, it was like, you know, uh, I found out that I just wanted to be an artist. So I would say, you know, early age and around like maybe nine years old uh, when hip hop, I was really getting deep in hip hop. I just wanted to like find my niche and that, that started with, uh, you know, graffiti. Used to tag and stuff and yeah. um, little characters and stuff like that. So that, that was how it really started. Okay. And hip -hop. so, so is, is, I mean, cause like your work, from what I've seen, it's pretty diverse, and you know, uh, where do you where where do you find your inspiration? Oh, uh, definitely my my inspiration comes from music and um, life, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm basically um, taking my muses from my uh, inspiration. I told you on uh, I think we were uh, DMing that I was um, planning on doing a uh, Knicks. Uh, tribute, you know, old guys versus the new guys, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that type of uh, mashup. Uh, the losing, I ain't gonna lie, man, it just took it, it, you know, <laughs> everything out of me. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, For sure. Uh, I think it was like uh, the week before 
Um, KP, we lost KP for the season. I I was just like, man, you know, um, I had lost my motivation for like, you know, a lot of things. It's like, you know, I was really amped for this season. You know, I was hoping that uh, we were going to um, just show improvements. You know what I'm saying? Just like, I just want to see a, a, a young core. Right. Right. Um, but getting back, getting back to your question, it was just basically, um, you know, you know, life, music, um, you know, whatever just come through my head, man. I'm just, I'm gonna like, you know, paint. So. Yeah. Um. So I'm on your, I'm on your website right now. When I, you know, I'm gonna pull up your website a little bit to, you know, so people can see some of the paintings on here, some of the work that you do. Um. Because it's, you know, it's really amazing work, and because you're a Nick fan, of course. You know, we want to give people a chance to, uh, you know, just, you know, Knicks fans, we want to give each other a chance to be seen. So I'm going to pull some of this up real quick. All right. Um, now, can, can you see the screen and you can see what I got up? Uh, no, I'm on the Skype. And, uh, oh, OK, that's I, cool. Uh, but, uh, but so, you, you know, but uh, right now we have a piece. Uh, let me see. Is there a name to it? What are you looking at? Right. So I'm looking at it's untitled right now, but it's it's a woman, it's blue and red. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. like you know, so just explain yeah. like, you know, explain to us, you know, what um like, you know, what was your inspiration or how were you feeling? What made you yeah. decide to do this piece? All right, that that piece right there, uh this is gonna sound funny, but you know, I you know, when you're drunk in the club, well, maybe you don't get drunk, but this is oh, your tipsy. I've been, I've okay. been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And you see, like, you know, lights on, on, uh, in there that, like, kind of make people a lot more beautiful than, you know, they really are. And it was like, you know, I found myself, like, staring at women in the club with those, those radiant lights. And then you have the music going. And I was like, yo, I wanted to duplicate that. You know, in uh, on, in a painting. Yeah. So it was that like that rich emotion that 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 radiance that um, I felt. You know, uh, towards a woman I seen in the, in the club. You know, what I mean, it was something about those like how the lights like yeah, hit her, right? And how she was like moving and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, your you know that the, the your senses kind of like overflow. Yeah. So um, that was basically my inspiration behind that piece. Okay. That's what's up. You know, I appreciate man. you for uh, sharing that. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I ho hopefully, you know, everybody get a chance to log on, go on to Instagram, go on to his website, you know, check it out. And I'm gonna make sure I put it up in the chat so everybody can get it too. You know, appreciate it, man. Uh, I love your show, bro. Appreciate it, man. And then you know, I got you know, we have another, uh, you know, another. Another sketch, another piece below. Um, you know, it's of a woman, and I notice, I, I do notice that you do a lot of um, paintings of women. Yeah, you know? I get that a lot. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, they're they're, they're inspiration, man. They're beautiful. Um, God's greatest creation, I, I believe. And uh, I, I live here in Atlanta, originally uh -huh. from Jersey. But I live here in Atlanta, and uh, you know they don't stop asking me for uh, you know being a muse. So I was like, okay, right. I paint you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you yeah, I, no, I, I so, feel you. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's like this right here, Jimi Hendrix. And man, that's tough. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I had sold that uh, year before. That was a monster, man. It was a six by uh, four piece. It was the biggest painting, one of the biggest paintings I ever did. I had sold it to a, a, a heart surgeon uh -huh. uh, down there, and uh, that that was that was good money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That my father. Money, I'm, I'm gonna show this to my father, man. My father is a big Jimi Hendrix fan, and he would love this man. right here. He would love it. He's a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, um, if you ever down the A, man, I, I think I got a, a a smaller one of that. Okay. Um, I, you know, it's yours, man. All right. Yeah. I mean, actually, I will be. I'm actually gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be in Atlanta this summer. Sure. Um Yeah, because you know I coach AAU, and so we travel right. to Atlanta every year 
for a tournament, uh, you know, mm-hmm. for a basketball tournament. So I'm gonna be in Atlanta this summer. I'm definitely gonna try to look you up because I like some right. of my. I would like some of my girls to come by, and, you know, uh, you know, just kind of see some of your work or you know. If you, now you have a studio. Do you work out of your home? Both. <laughs> both. Okay. It's both, man. It's like the studio and the home. You know, uh, it, as you can see, it's like it takes up uh, most of my life. Yeah. Um, takes up most of my life. You know what I'm saying? It's like I can't really have a living space. Right. <laughs> uh, you know? So it's like, you know, as you know, when you do what you love, man, it's like you eat, drink, sleep. Uh, and it, you exactly. Know, consumes half your life. So, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm on your Instagram now, you know, uh, you know, just showing some of the things that's on the Instagram. You know, got a beautiful uh, painting of Biggie. Oh, up yeah, there. man. Rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Biggie, man, it was like uh, one of my most, like, uh, well, second to Prince. Prince is like my number one inspiration. You know what I mean? Oh, and then exactly. um, Biggie, was, Biggie was like one of those dudes, man. He just he just brought it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Tank right. Crack commandments. Uh, yeah. You know, um, so I had to pay homage to him, man. Every year I post that that piece right there, you know, yeah. um, the, just to like, you know, com- com- you know, just just give him love. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and um, yeah, I just pulled it up. Yeah, it's, it, it's tough, man. I mean, and I mean the way you can capture his features, uh, it's it's just amazing to me. It really is. I appreciate. It. And uh, and then I see this down here. Of, uh, I see you got. This sketch of Rakim, you know, that's like, you know, that, that's one of my, I share a birthday with Rakim too, you know what I mean? And, you know, that's one yeah. of my favorite artists right there. I, I love Rakim. Yeah, yeah. man. He, he came down of Atlanta a couple of times and I, uh, I always missed him. I always missed yeah. him, man. And, um, yeah, I had uh, sold that piece uh, about last year of the Rakim. Um, again, you know, music is my inspiration. Um Mostly, you know, our hip hop, you know, this, I don't know, this uh, young generation of hip hop, I really don't know how to, uh, how to process how to it yet. It. Yeah. I feel I can't, you. I can't. All that mumble rap and stuff. I, yeah. just, I, just can't. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. Um, hey, you, your work, man, is, is, I mean, it's, it's just, it's great, you know, and, um, appreciate it. And you know, now have you have you done any work on the Knicks? You know, ha- have you made any uh any Knicks they fans? They have not given me enough inspiration, man. <laughs> <laughs> they just have it. Right. They just have it. I mean, it's like you know, I gotta do one for Melo though. Yeah. Uh, okay. Melo, I think I think Melo when he left, like I was I was conflicted because I saw a guy that was like kind of losing a step. And a team that was going in a different direction. And uh, Melo, I felt like, was one of those Knicks that I was like, man, you know, I got to I gotta paint him. And, uh, you know, when he left, I wished him the best because I felt like it was his, 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 uh, his chance. This is his chance to get that ring that he, he deserves. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, don't, I, I don't want Melo to go out without a ring. I, I don't. I don't yeah. want to see that from him. I think he's he's you know bona fide Hall of Famer, but you know what was going on with him and you know Phil Jackson and and everything like that. I I, I just fell for the dude. You know what I'm saying? And he you know he gave us he gave us uh, he gave us his heart and soul, man. Yeah. And um, I think when he retires, hopefully you know you know he'll 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 retire, Nick. You know, I want him to retire. Nick. And I hope a uh, Nick organization is like watching this right now. And then like, I'll be the artist that presents him that, that, you know, that. There that you pain. go. Yeah, for real. Um, I'm with you 100%. I really, I, I, I actually feel or, or think somewhere down the line it's possible that he could come back to the Knicks. You, know you think I, so? I, I think so. I think. I think that Melo loves New York. Mm, and yeah. I think, you know, I, I I think that uh he wanted to win in New York and I think it was hard for him to leave. 
You know what I'm saying? And I think if he gets a chance to, even if, like, if he wins a championship at OKC or whatever, or if the Knicks are contenders and he hasn't won a championship, or if it's not in OKC, wherever, and he could come back and maybe be a role player, you know, and, and um, you know, try to win one with the Knicks, I think he would. And I think yeah. I think that James Dolan liked Melo. I, I think the whole problem was with Phil Jackson. I think the organization will welcome him back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, uh, and I'd like it, to see that. My only, my only thing is that his time is is short. I mean, yeah. he's 33 years old, and where are we going as a franchise? Right, that he'll be even in a contention. It would just be like maybe like a you know a farewell situation. You know mm. what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, like like this team. I don't really believe that we're. Well, here's the thing. Let me just jump to this. Like, I want to see what we do in the draft. I like Michael Bridges. I yeah. want him on as okay. a Nick. I think I think he'll be great at small forward. Um, I think uh, you know his athleticism, his length. He can shoot the three. Um, I'm a fan of Michael Bridges. Um, now, you know. I'm I'm just you know hoping hoping for that you know yeah that's that's my and I you know I I think I'm a fan of him as well I was you know I was looking at him last night and if the fact that he's a junior I like the fact that he's a junior and he still has upside you know what I mean because mm -hmm. now he could come in and and really be ready to play in the NBA you know we get a 19 yeah. year old. You know, KP, when he comes back, I think when KP comes back, he's going to he's going to want to win. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Because, you know, you just suffered a knee injury that could have impacted your career. If it were me, yeah. I'd be like, I want to win now because I'm. you never know when you're going to get hurt and lose it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think someone like Macau Bridges is going to be uh -huh. a little bit more NBA ready than bringing in a 19-year-old. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And for still sure. have the and upside. I think, yeah, and I think he's the missing piece that the the Knicks need is because uh, I don't like our small a small forward position at all. I'm not a fan of Beasley. I feel right. like people who who think that Beasley is all that is smoking the same thing he's smoking. Because like I was watching the game today, and I don't know if you ever pay attention like how he like you know watches the ball go up you know and, you know after he's you know that he leaves his, his defender where he just watches the ball just goes up and he's not blocking out he's not chasing for the rebound there was a one uh i believe it was in the third quarter where he was guarding uh serge Ibaka. serge hit a three missed it long rebound got right back to serge and you know they're passing it around and serge just like you know Ends up in the uh, underneath the basket trying to um, you know make a layup. And I'm watching Beasley like, yo, put a body on man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was part of my uh, you know I mean he he he's done well this 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 season. But when KB went down, I I like many Nick fans expected him to step up. You know, yep. give me 20 points a game. I don't even know since the. Uh, I mean, maybe you know better than I do if he has ever scored 20 points since KP went out, over 20 points. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'd have to look. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I, it's it's like, you know, you see why he's he's never stuck in, right. in you know, the team. And my thing is like, and then you have a situation with uh, KO. I believe that with KO... You sign, you resign KO, mm -hmm. and I believe in addition by subtraction. You 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 bring back KO, but you don't bring back Beasley. I believe at that position, you could find an athletic small forward that could do a lot more, or even ser serviceable things. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. and so. I think he's expendable. I think right now he be, he became more expendable. I think at his age, we know what we're going to get. 
Right. You know, we know what we're gonna get. I rather invest that 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 money that that you know on on a position where you know we can at least grow. I believe that's with Michael Bridges. And I love the kid uh, uh, that we just picked up. Uh, what's the new kid that we picked up? Uh, uh, Troy Williams. Yes, I like Troy him. Williams. I like him. Yeah, I think yeah. I think if he could. I I believe that he could. Uh, and while I got you here, if mm-hmm. we're gonna go a new coach, I don't want a Mark Jackson. I don't want a Stan Van Gundy. I want somebody from a winning culture. I feel. And you. I say pick some assistant coach off of like the the popovich tree or okay. even a steve Kerr tree okay that's just my opinion yeah okay because i definitely i would definitely right. if someone for, i would definitely love to have someone from the popovich tree you know i mean you know i'm not sure if steve Kerr has, has a tree yet you know because he just got in <laughs> but i think yeah. uh from the popovich tree definitely man I think Steve has a, a, a has a tree because you know you see what Luke Walton is doing with uh, the Lakers. Yeah, true. Yeah, like I yep, didn't. Yep, okay. I didn't think it. Like I think the Lakers have. I don't know how you think about the Lakers, like the talent, but uh, they're, they're young boys. You know what I'm saying? They're young guns, and they they really plan. Yeah. And so I think he has a tree. My thing is like with such a young team with the Knicks, player development is very important. Yeah. Top of it. He'll pick somebody from Yugoslavia, whatever. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And start them. You know what I mean? It's like right. you'll you'll find somebody off of the D League, and then put him in a role. And I think Frank needs that. Frank needs a coach that's going to believe in him. Frank needs a coach that's going to develop him, put him in the right position. Mm-hmm. I believe Frank. I love what Frank does. He's a traditional point guard. Uh, I love that he hustles on defense, and I think. I think, I think they're trying to make him a combo guard. Right. Honestly, right. I think I, from what I see is that if you put him at shooting guard, for the, f- just for this experiment, I'm not talking his whole career. Mm-hmm. Just for ex- to get him comfortable mentally, to say, hey, you know what, take it to the basket. Right. Or maybe the reasoning with Frank is this: he guards the best players. And that's usually a shooting guard or a small forward. Or a small forward, right. Right. So you put him on the best play. Like, I think he played pretty good defense on DeRozan tonight. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was on and off, uh, you know, watching the game. But I think he played a decent, you know, thing. When he played against Harden, I was like, man, you know, you know, Frank took on that challenge. Yeah, you know what I'm exactly, saying? exactly. And I think the criticism with Frank is is not good because I think that what Frank does on the defensive end, he he ex, I think he tires himself out. So when he gets on offense, last thing he's gonna do is try to drive to the basket. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just want a coaching staff, a system that's gonna develop, you know, those players and help them grow. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And 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 yeah. And one of, one of the things that Popovich has, why he can pull some players from Yugoslavia or from the D, G League uh, or used to be the D League, is because they have a developmental system that is, is top-notch. And a scout that is looking for the exact, looking for the, the players with the right intangibles, that have the skill sets that they're looking for, and then they develop them into the player that they need them to be or would like them to be. You know, and Absolutely. then... Right, and then they're ready to jump right in and fit into a system, you know, uh, and, and play the type of basketball that they want to play. You know, that's what we yeah. got to start. To, that's that's what we need to develop if we want to be successful, long term success. Not we grabbed a couple of stars and we won some games, and then now we got to start over again when those stars get old. Long term success that. You know, year after year after year, like the Spurs, man, 20 whatever years in the playoffs, long term success. That's yeah. what, you know, we need to try to build and try to just. If I was the Knicks, I would go to, if I was Scott Perry, I'd go to San Antonio and say, let me interview you and find out what you're doing. Because I want right. to copy it and bring it to New York. And they got yeah. a player that used to play for the Knicks. Um, Who they have right now? That, uh, um, uh... 
he has a he he's Nigerian. Um, he played for the Knicks. Uh, God, what's his? He's, he's four years old. He's forty years old. He um, God, what is, what's his name? He has like a a, a funny. Uh, nah, forgive me. Not, not a funny. <laughs> not a funny uh, name. Sorry. Uh, you're African, or you're not funny. Uh, it, it, it's a um, it's a name that hard to uh, pronounce. But he used to play for the Knicks, young guy, uh-huh. 40 years old. And uh, if somebody could look him up on, that would, that would help me out a lot. But you know, he, he's been with them for I think six six years. Six years. You know what I'm, saying? I'm trying to think of who who it is. Let's see if I Let's see who they have now. I'm not sure. The assistant coach. Oh, oh, oh! You mean the assistant coach? One, one yeah. of the coaches. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I had to look up there. I, I had to look up their coaching staff, but um, I think I know who you're talking about. I think I know who you're talking about. I can't think of it right now, though. Yeah, but uh, so, but but that's what you know. That's what I'm hoping to um. That's what I'm hoping the Knicks can do. You know what I'm saying? Hoping the Knicks can do. Yeah. But hey, CP man, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna get out of here. I appreciate, appreciate you jumping on, man. And um, you know, hopefully we can, you know, we can do this again and maybe next time, maybe the Knicks will inspire you to, you know, have something. I, I get it though. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh when man. I get <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And when I get to the ATL. Uh, I'm definitely gonna look you up. I'm gonna let you know when I'm, when we're on. We go down the 26th through the 30th of July. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm on the way down, I'm gonna hit you up on the gram and um, let you know I'm on the way down there. All right. Yep. I right, appreciate Bye. it, man. Bye, man. Appreciate it. All right. Peace out, bro. Later. Yes. That was CP the artist, and I thank you guys for uh, you know checking them out. And, uh, you know, if you get a chance, get on his website. I'm going to post up his website. And I'm going to post up his Instagram so you guys can check him out because he has some amazing work. And, uh, you know, if you are obviously, obviously, if you are interested in purchasing some of his work, you can purchase it right off of his website. I'm saying you can buy it right off of his website. You know, he, he, he's he, he's an amazing artist. Here, his website. And I'm going to get the Instagram up for you in just a second. You know, and, you know, I just want to remind everybody, man, if you have something that you do, if you, you know, uh, you know, um, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? I actually asked him, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought his his art was so great. Uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, display it and, and let we got Knicks fans everywhere. We got a lot of art uh uh talented Knicks fans everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to, you know, you know, I just wanted to 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 help let people see, you know, what, what kind of work he was doing because his art was so great. You know, so if you have anything, feel free, man. You know, hit me up and say, hey, you know, I like to display my music or um, whatever it is. And, you know, of course, you know, I'm going to review it and I'm going to take a look at it and take a listen to it and, and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I'm definitely, definitely like to, you know, get as many people on as possible. You know what I'm saying? It's all love here. Even the haters, you know what I'm saying? E- even the even the Frank trolls and, and, and all of that. If you got something that you do, man, let me know. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it, it's all love for sure. All right? And then here's his Instagram. All right? So, uh, you know, hopefully you guys check him out. You know, check him out and, uh, you know, you know, give him some love, you know, Share his Instagram, share his website with anyone that you think might be interested. You know what I'm saying? With anyone you think might be interested. But hey, it was a great show. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm going to head up out of here. Right? I'm going to head up. Now, I mean, I don't know. Some people hate. You know, some people hate. 
But I'm going to head up out of here. And uh, I hope to, well, we play on, when do we play again? Let's go back, check the games. What's today? Sunday. Next game is versus Dallas. Tuesday, March 13th at 7.30 at the Garden versus Dallas. Dennis Smith Jr. is coming to town. You know what I'm saying? Knicks fans, do not boo that man. He did nothing to us. He's just a young guy that's trying to make his way in the NBA. So please do not boo Dennis Smith Jr. It's not fair to him. You know what I mean? He um he's just a young guy trying to make it in the NBA. Give that man his respect. All right. But I see you guys after the Dallas game, right here. Nothing but Knicks. You know what I'm saying? I want to say peace to everybody. Uh, shout out to, of course, shout out to CP, the artist, again, for coming on the show. Great work. I love it. Shout out to Siobhan, uh, to French Unicorn. Shout out to you for the super chats. And Siobhan, uh, hopefully, you know, prayers up for Siobhan, his wife. Um, hopefully everything is good. And, uh, you know, take care of that situation. Please, prayers up to you, bro. Uh, peace out, family, and I'll talk to you later. Peace. If you like the show, please subscribe below, ring the bell. You'll get a notification anytime that I go live. Check out these videos over here. Stay updated on the New York Knicks. Peace.